My name is Jackie and I'm the CEO and Chief Product Obsessor at Maylove. Today we address the question, can I use vitamin C and retinoids together? The answer is yes, you can use these ingredients together in your skincare routine. There are very few tried and true skincare ingredients that are as well studied and proven as vitamin C and retinoids. Vitamin C is an effective antioxidant that helps protect your skin from UV damage, which is a huge driver of premature aging. And vitamin C can also stimulate collagen production as well as combating hyperpigmentation. Supplementing your skin with topical vitamin C becomes even more important as we get older and vitamin C levels in our skin drops over time. Retinoids, on the other hand, are types of vitamin A. They bind to specific receptors in the cell nucleus that kickstart skin rejuvenation in a lot of ways, like one, creating more collagen, two, thickening the epidermis, the top layer of the skin, which thins with age, and three, promoting formation of new blood vessels in your skin so you can get back some of that rosy glow. Retinoids also fight hyperpigmentation, but through a different mechanism than vitamin C. We have published newsletters that go really in depth into vitamin C and retinoids, so you could check them out in the links below. What happens when you use these two ingredients together? There have been some clinical studies where both ingredients were used in a skincare routine and the results were positive. One is from Hendren and colleagues in 2016 in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology. They had 44 testers with hyperpigmented and photodamaged skin use a 30% vitamin C product and a 0.5% retinol product for 12 weeks. By weeks 8 and 12, the researchers found significant benefits to skin clarity and evenness, fine lines and wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, and skin smoothness as graded by a clinician. As far as any side effects or irritation, the researchers noticed worse skin dryness at weeks four and eight, which is not surprising actually, since 0.5% retinol is quite concentrated. But by week 12, dryness was back to baseline, normal levels, which is typical as the skin gets used to the retinoid. Now, a drawback of this study is that it had no placebo control condition meaning they didn't have a group trying out the same product but without the retinol and vitamin C. This study is not meant to scientifically prove that this vitamin C retinol combo benefits more than a placebo or more than each alone. However, what we can tell from the study is that testers using these two together saw benefits without having unusual side effects. The next study is from Sate and colleagues in 2005 in Skin Pharmacology and Physiology. The study looked into whether you still saw a benefit by using retinol and vitamin C together in smaller amounts. And please recall the Herndon study used 30% uh, vitamin C and 0.5% retinol. They actually conducted two double-blind studies. In the first study, they tried three months of treatment in postmenopausal women with a 0.07% retinol and 3.5% vitamin C. In the second study, they tried six months of treatment in postmenopausal women with sun damaged skin with 0.04% retinol and 3% vitamin C. By the way, at Maylove, we recommend a minimum of 0.1% retinol and 10% vitamin C for effectiveness. So both of these studies actually used pretty diluted formulas. Even so, in the first study, they found increased epidermal skin thickness and what is called improved interdigitation in the epidermal dermal junction. Basically, younger skin has better interdigitation than older skin, which means different layers of the skin are more firmly bonded together. This means the treatment helped restore the skin to a younger and healthier state compared to the placebo. In the second study, researchers found early signs of repair of long-term sun damage at the dermal level where collagen is and which is the deeper level of skin below the epidermis. What we can learn from these studies is that you can use vitamin C and retinoids together and get great results even in low doses. So even if you have really sensitive skin and can't tolerate stronger vitamin C and retinoids, I think you should try to use a more gentle formula instead of completely giving up on these amazing, well-researched and highly proven active ingredients. Now, here at Maylove, we formulate these two ingredients separately and the reason is first, Retinoid serums are not recommended for pregnant women. Since we want all of our other serums to be safe for use, 
throughout pregnancy, we decided to formulate retinoids separately. Second, since retinoids can be irritating, particularly in the first few weeks of use, formulating retinoids separately allows you to ease your skin into using the ingredient and also you can pick and choose serums based on your skin and what it can handle. And third, vitamin C serums as an antioxidant may be more useful to apply in the morning before you get UV exposure during the day. Retinoid serums on the other hand, at least in the first few weeks, should only be applied at night since they can increase your skin's sensitivity to the sun. This is why your dermatologist always tells you to be consistent with sunscreen application when using retinoids. So, when you're using these ingredients, we recommend that you apply vitamin C in the morning, and if you like, in the evening as well to replenish the vitamin C that may have been depleted by UV exposure during the day. And retinoids can be the cornerstone of your nightly skincare routine. In terms of how you apply these ingredients, the simple rule of light to heavy works here. So put on your toners and lightweight water-based serums first, then your thicker serums, then creams. Give a about a minute or two between each step to let the skin fully absorb each product. Asorbic acid, which is the most steady form of vitamin C and thus most often used, is water soluble, which is why vitamin C serums tend to be very light. So I like to apply my vitamin C serum right after cleansing. Give it a minute or longer, then apply your retinoid. Retinoids are actually oil soluble, so they are usually in thicker serum formulas or in a cream form. That is it for this video. Click on the link below for the write-up of this video as well as more information on the two papers mentioned. Thank you and see you again.